Welcome to Softcore History. Welcome back to Softcore History. My name is Jake Goldman, and I am joined as always by Hoodie Dan Redrester. What's up, Hoodie Dan? What's up? What's up with the hoodie? I mean, Dan? It worked for Carmelo, right? Hoodie Mello was a thing for <laughs> Hoodie Mello was a thing. Yeah. yeah. It did work He's for him. He's better at basketball than he was. contract. Do you, you just got like the, the beats in underneath. Yeah. I'm a free agent right You're now. You're a free agent? That's really, I'm looking at Iconoblast, some other options. Wow. Oh, I thought you were, I thought that was a, uh, you were saying you're leaving uh, Kylie potentially. No, not quite. Yeah. No, I was, I was looking she, at other options. She does podcast wise. I will say, my dog is Business still. Business endeavors, you know? My dog is still doing great, by the way. Thank you for training my dog. You're welcome. Yeah. See? Someone had to do it. Yeah. I'm a good dad. Yeah. Oh, I'm fine. Uh, thanks for dad cucking me with my dog. I'm totally okay with it. He's been a very good boy lately. I'm uh, the child whisperer. Does this mean my child is going to be well behaved? <laughs> Once I get a hold of him. <laughs> Let him get his mitts on it. And the, the other voice you obviously hear is Rob Fox. How's it going? Good. I'm sorry I made you Would've come. Would have been going better yesterday. So a little context. We're recording this on a Thursday night. Uh, Rob and Dan are going to be in Nashville. No, Rob will not be in Nashville. Oh, yeah. You're not going it's anywhere. Yeah. Dan guys, is going to. You guys could have recorded Monday, but you're. We don't know how to do it. Yeah, I know. Dan is actually, yeah. has actually has done the thing where Dan makes himself completely uh, unreplaceable yeah. <laughs> in our friend group again. Yeah, that's by design. <laughs> None of us know how to record the podcast except for Dan, so we're doing it early before he goes to Nashville. Um, Rob and I are idiots. And I was supposed to record Wednesday last night, but I've been busy at work. I'm going to whine about it. But Giorgio will also be in Nashville. That's why he can't record it with guests. That's yeah. true. That is also true. Uh, big old uh, Drinking Bros Nashville trip, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Going we got to the a, Georgia Vandy game, right? It, it's not for that, but yeah, we are participating yeah. in that game. How much? How much? Like, God, that's going to be a bloodbath. By the time this comes yeah. out, I will uh, have done an episode with hopefully Kid Rock. Soon. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to his golf tournament. So. Oh, that's awesome. I look forward to you hearing about how he thinks communism is taking over the country. Yeah, only in Detroit, though. Yeah. Just Detroit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Because his name is Kid. Kid Rock, the most southern northerner. The bowl guy. Actually, Ted Nugent is the most southern northerner. He's from. He's also from Detroit. So whenever people are like, oh, bull got good whenever, or bull got bad when the stock market mm -hmm. goes up and down, I always just think of Kid Rock. Bull God good. Yeah. He was the bull god? He was the bull god, the original bull god. You are right. that It, it is really fucked up that someone that from that far north can look like a human confederate flag. I mean, that's what the entire Upper it Peninsula is. It is stolen is. valor. It is. Yeah, totally. It truly is. As, as a true son of the south, yeah. the only one... Co Cooper, are you from the south? No, he's from... I'm the, the only southerner in this room. Yeah. He's from Oregon. Yeah. Which is I actually mean, has a lot of spots that are probably yeah, the same not, as the UP. When but, you're not in Portland, yeah. uh, there's quite Dude, some. Kid, Kid Rock's not UP. He's fucking it's like of... rich burbs. Is he like Gross Point? No, I don't know if it's that, but yeah, he grew up wealthy. Nah, man. Sure. He's from Flint. Yeah. Where the water's spicier than the people. They got a missile All defense the... system, actually. All I'm saying <laughs> is if, he, if his ancestors are from Michigan, his dirty trash ancestors were uh, defeating the Confederacy, not hoping their their children would one day put this Yeah, but also a lot of truck. militias in Michigan. There are. Yeah. Same with Oregon, really, too. I mean, I think Coop was probably at one point part of a militia. You have to be. It's, it's, yeah. it's like yeah. part of, it's like uh, how in like European countries they make you join like the Peace Corps or the military. The Oregon is just like militia. Go I'm for it. Or, I'm 95% sure the guys that just came onto our network, uh, part yes. of my American, they're for sure yeah. in a militia. There's no greater representation of the horseshoe theory than militias. Yeah. Do we do we subscribe to the horseshoe theory? Yeah. Yeah. One million percent. Yeah. Yeah. Google it if you don't know. I don't feel like this I, I think it can be a little lazy sometimes, but it, it checks out sometimes, it doesn't other times. Yeah. Like, you know, politics yeah. isn't just it's really easy to or like the political compass, for instance. Yeah. You know, like it's easy to get lost. I think in Hitler the, is the same as people that want me to get a vaccine. Then so that's pretty horseshoe theory. Yeah, that's yeah, checks out. Yeah, yeah, sure. totally good. Sound sound argument. Yeah. Um they're just an inch away from each other. That is a spicy argument, Rob. Oh I'm yeah. Gl yeah, and I'm glad I could do this transition so well cuz today You've been trying to work in this transition. I've been trying to say spice a at lot. At least 3 times already this episode. I have I think we got to We got to stop it. The spice. The spice must flow. Yeah, the spice. That so Yeah, one I'm a big dune guy. Yeah. But also uh, I was eating Indian food last night okay. trying to think of a uh, topic. Old Graj Mahal. 
Uh, no, I made it myself. Uh, so then you weren't eating Indian food. I was making, uh, I was culturally appropriating Indian food in my kitchen. Yeah, you were just <laughs> dumping spice on chicken. No, it was, it was, anyway. <laughs> uh, I, I was pretty high when I wrote the intro, so get ready for it. Uh, the wor- <laughs> You're making Indian food, so that's not yeah. surprising. But, uh, yeah, so I was like, what the fuck's up with the spice? Like, what, like, how did it get started? We've talked about the East India Company before with spices, and, like, we did a whole episode on that. I think Dan Go ahead and- did. Listen to that episode, yeah. That's a really good episode. Uh, We're going to touch a little bit about that, but I kind of want to talk about more early, early, early history. But so one thing at first, of course, I'm going to do the uh, textbook bad writer thing. The word spice comes from the old French word espèce. No, you need to, first off, (laughs) you you need to go full (laughs) shitty writer, which is Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. (laughs) Define spice. In case you've been living under a rock. Spices are a thing. Yeah. What was right. every trope like when freelance writers would throw in their stuff to Grand X? We all know. We, we all, all know. know. We've it, all been there. We, yeah. If there's one thing. Um, in case you've been living under a rock was yeah. a pretty common one. Yeah. Um, I don't think everyone, the anyone did the dictionary thing. You, like essentially I would have to tell remote writers to be bad about this too. And I, it's, it's like a reflex to do this for sure. To like, it's almost to like cushion your own hatred of your own words, right? Yeah. You try to like qualify it a little bit, so you'd be like, "We all know," or like, "Everyone knows," or like, "It's pretty." Co-, or it's like, trying. It's trying to create a commonality yeah, to make yeah, it more. You're trying to normalize. Your you're trying to, yeah. yeah. Right. It, so it, what you do is you write write that sentence. Do it. Like write that sentence with the shitty. Throw it away. And then start. No, just cut the beginning out. Okay, so I'm gonna do that without the yeah, yeah, yeah. origin. Cut the, you don't need I, to cut the rest of the sentence. Is probably fine. Yeah. It's okay. You weren't getting paid to write. Uh, that's true. I wasn't. No. I was doing other things. That's just me and Rob because yeah. we were gifted. Yes. I know. I was not. We were the talent. I was. You the, were a spreadsheet monkey. I was a t-shirt chucker. Yeah. I believe is what you would call me yes. every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, and in fact, his stomach might be the way to his destiny as well. Wait, how did you start it out? <laughs> okay, I'll go back to it. The word spice comes from the old French word espèce. Which became spice and which came from the Latin root spec, or spes, the noun referring to appearance, sort, kind. But what's interesting about the root word here is it also not only created the word spice, but created the word species. And I think those two things are very much intertwined our species and spice. Okay. I mean, I think there's. So, anyway, then we again. We essentially kill for bold flavors. Oh, we do. Yeah. We love the taste. We love the taste tell- makers. So what you're telling me is that Guy Fieri would have slaughtered thousands of natives. Um, Guy if Fieri. He had been born at a different time. I'm just saying, Flavor Town is an oligarchy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flavor Town uh, is sits on a throne of bones. So maybe let's uh, pump the brakes on renaming Columbus. Yeah. <laughs> After, no, dead serious. If you actually want to talk about flavor and where it came from, it might be more patriarchal than. Well, actually, Columbus came over here for the same fucking reason. Everyone likes flavors, like. He wanted a quicker route, but we'll get to that. You put a little salt on something, whites go nuts. Salt actually has been around for a while. Yeah, salt. A lot longer. Salt. Yeah, everyone had salt. Like Either way, yeah. you just anyway. season in your chicken makes the whites go crazy. <laughs> it do. It really do, though. It uh, do be like that. The acquisition of food flavorings may be by far the single most significant endeavor in the history of our species. I think it's up there with like making sure fire didn't go out when they found it mm-hmm. and eventually figuring out which penis made more humans. Like, it's up there with that. Okay. Like, I'd say those things. What's the okay. answer? I, I'm not... It wasn't a question. Wh- which penis does make... Which hole the penis goes in? Oh, never mind. Proceed. <laughs> okay. I heard that completely wrong. I might have said it wrong because I'm so... Basically, there's an answer to that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, for sure. It's it's definitely... Yeah. East Asian penis or uh, South Asian penis. Those are the two that... They make the most. By far. Well, yeah. they drink the three penis Actually, wine, right? Yeah. Yes, they do. Yes, European they do. European penis is pathetic. It is the limpest. Yeah. And shriveliest. And if you don't cut the tip Look, off I'm of it. I'm about, I'm not, by the way. This isn't a penis podcast, by, by the way. way. Let me just side note here. Having a newborn. Oh, man, you're going to talk about a baby penis? Man. Shocker. Those first fucking like three or four days you're changing a diaper after circumcision. Oh, you mutilated your child? Yeah. Fucking gross, dude. I made his penis hotter. <laughs> he did. You made it look bigger. Yeah. He needed that and at it does look zero. Better. Also, man, <laughs> I saw, so I've seen it. I saw it uncircumcised and circumcised, and it looked weird and stupid. It looked like a dead worm circumcised. <laughs> <laughs> or uncircumcised. Right. Yeah, uncircumcised, looks like- it looked pathetic. <laughs> Now, now it's it's strong. Yeah. No, and it's funny. It's like everyone's cop. like, you shouldn't do that to kids because it's going to like, they won't be as sensitive. Well, they like, should they'll- get to choose. 
they have the right to choose. I guarantee you, no one is picking circumcision. Here's why like, no one's picking that. By the way, it, after a certain age, that becomes a full anesthesia surgery. Like you have to go under for it. Right. No, that was a legitimate argument. I think the New York Times wrote about what that the child should get to choose whether or not he's circumcised. I. I don't know. Listen, I'm not going to get into the pros and cons of circumcision. That is an argument. Cut your baby's penis. That's just, all I'm saying. Just be just normal. Just traumatize your just kid by normal. mutilating their genitalia. Yeah. That's a normal off, thing to you do. You don't traumatize it. So, by the way, you want to know what the anesthesia for a like, day-old infant is? What? Sugar water. How the fuck does that work? It distracts. They're stupid. It distracts. <laughs> oh, it's just new sensation, yeah. period? That's hilarious. Man, hum- how are we here? <laughs> how are we here? Because we're Trust simplistic. me, dude. After taking yeah. care of an infant for three weeks, I have no fucking <laughs> idea. Well, after watching a woman barely, I mean, like, my wife crushed it in the birth or whatever, but it was brutal. And this was with 21st century medicine. I know, dude. Like, You've I, been I, saying I was that. Like, there's just, I understand why 60% of women, like, it feels like they chose to die. Like, they were just like, I don't want to be here anymore after this. They essentially do because they have postpartum after and they are uh, sad. not the same. Sad. Not the same. It's a very, that's actually a very sad thing you're talking about. But anyway, uh, the discovery of flavor variation not only created the world's culinary culture, but it served as the foundation of religious ceremony and some religions entirely in antiquity. It raised and toppled empires and led to the discovery of new lands for conquest, including this country we sit in and do dumbass dick joke humor in every single day. Thank you, Rob, for your service. Um, I also, direct the center of Christopher Columbus. That's why I was saluting myself. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> well, speaking of Chris, old Chris, old yeah, Uncle Chrissy. Real piece of shit. Uh, if you don't like supporting the patriarchy, monarchy, or oligarchy, I have some really fucking bad news for you. Spices are pretty much the fiber of the reality that you live in today. And if you enjoy spices outside of uh, China, India, the Middle East, or South America, you indirectly support literally all of those things. So shut the fuck that's up. That's like most of the world. Wait, they're not. How many spices are in Africa? Uh, actually, the top 10 producers of spice in the world um, are India, Bangladesh, Turkey, China, Pakistan, Iran, Nepal, Colombia. Colombia is the only... Oh, Ethiopia is the main producer. Every like This is 99% of the spice in the so world. Colombia's got a stranglehold in South America. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you're still talking about tens of millions of tons outside of this, but like yeah. you got to think of how much spice is this being is made. all like industrial farming. Yeah, right. Point. Exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, because all they had, well, at least what I was taught in school in North America, all we had was corn. Maize. 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 Rainbow maize. Did you know that corn does not mean maize? Corn used to just mean, it was a catch-all term. Wasn't for, it like plant? No, no, kind of. It was for the low, just whatever the, they grew locally. Right. Oh, so it's like the special. <laughs> Yeah, essentially. Like, yeah. Do you think it was special. just like the mashup of corn maize at like a Octo- like a October haunted house type deal? Yeah, that probably influenced. That's definitely. Uh, why we called it corn four hundred years ago? Yeah, corn maize. Yeah, yeah, that checks out. They just kind of mashed together and mm-hmm. it's, it's history. But yeah, just to kind of like bring it back to um, why and how this like spices are really maybe the root cause of capitalism. <laughs> Uh, We're always chasing that flavor dragon. Dude, we are. The East India Company, which Dan talks about, by comparison to today's monetary value, is the most valuable corporation to ever have existed in the entire world. Do you know what it's worth? What it would be worth today? 12 Amazons. Uh, Yup. Yeah, no, I think I I think I said the number. Did you say it? I don't know it off the top of my head. What is Amazon worth? I I don't know. Well, anyway, it'd be worth $7.8 trillion. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not that much. Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> I thought it was going to be way more than that. I mean, I seven, thought you are going to give me like like 50 trill. 7.8 trillion? We're trying to spend half of that right now on highways. Do you know how many... Do you know how many... Bil- yeah, I guess that's true. I hear I hear almost and, that number every day. <laughs> like, but I'm saying like from a business point... We're not talking about... We're not talking about government... U.S. debt right now? It's higher than that. It's got to be goddamn okay. close to that... The all-time okay. spice situation... Yeah, that's nothing. Amazon's three hundred nineteen. That's peanuts. Is the NFL <laughs> worth more than that? Goddamn. No. Well, um, each the team. Cowboys alone are worth like three billion. Yeah, thirty-two teams, but they're not all created equal. But like, what are the Jaguars going for? A, I have no idea. But it can't. Get the Jaguars. Uh, I, almost all the NFL. For like so Ur- Ur- Herb's on his way out, right? Like that message he sent. By the way, Herb's oh, got to be on them. Urban might not make it six games. <laughs> I know he's like. Not doing well, man. Um, so yeah, that's he's, what he's going to tell us. Yeah, I have heart problems. I hear USC's open though. Oh, my yeah, heart. 
the ocean helps it though. Yeah. I mean, the West Ocean. Yeah, I mean uh, Central LA. Yeah, yeah Compton. <laughs> Compton really helps me. Uh, anyway, East India Company was a seven point eight trillion dollar company, and to think about that in perspective, though, um, it was the first globalist capitalist corporation in the fucking world. It created multinational conglomerates before capitalism existed, really. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, I mean, it was essentially created before the Industrial Revolution, which would be the advent of a, any sort of modern economic system. It was its own nation. It had a fucking navy. Yeah, exactly. So Yeah, it was tight. It did that 400 years before global capitalism was even a fucking thing. Like, it's, it's bananas what Spice did. Well, really, before just even... You say capitalism, but really it's any global economy at all. Yeah, totally. I mean, well, I'm talking about global trade just in general. Like there, yeah. there was there was some you know merchants here and there. Like yeah, it was there was quote unquote global trade, but it but was it was like, small business trade, and you had to go. It wasn't like taking point A of the world and going all the way across it to point B. It was like a like A to B to like. You know how when you label your fraternity, there's the alpha chapter, beta chapter, and then you run through the alphabet, so you, then it's the alpha, alpha chapter, beta, beta chapter? Yeah. Like, you're going through all of that. You're going through the A, B, C, to the A, A, B, B, C, C. Yeah, it's it's hands, hands, yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah, there yeah, was yeah, no, yeah. like, direct route, right. like, from cradle to grave no product. Going, no one was even going A to F. No, right? I'm, like it, it was, yeah. Like, so it was a lot. The point I'm getting at is, like, they created vertical integration, too, in a way. Like, I mean, so, but before... European businessmen started discovering new worlds yeah. to cut out the middlemen that provided them spice and vertically integrate their mm. countries into their business plan. Yeah. Uh, they had no idea where any of this shit came from because they had to deal with like Middle Eastern traders. Right. So, uh, Dan, if you were like a Roman trader and you asked like, hey, where does this spice come from? What do you think their answer would be? Well, silk Road. No, where where does it originate? The Road of Silk. That's where silk comes from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Spice. First spice off, Road. The, the, <laughs> yeah, Spice Boulevard. The very last guy on the chain doesn't fucking know. <coughs> no, Other actually. Other than you. Yeah. Like, you, you're the last guy. He's the second to last guy. He didn't fucking know. When they started sailing down, though, and, like, trying to get closer yeah. to, like, where, like, okay, this guy doesn't know, so we're going to go to the next guy, stuff like that. They all have the same fucking story. Uh, about 2,500 years ago, Arab traders would tell stories of the ferocious cinnamon bird or the cinnamologus. Love that. This, Sounds like a Pokemon. This is the most, this is the best story I've ever heard. This a really l- bad Pokemon. It's, it's a shitty one. It's like yeah. a Pidgey. It's and like it, a sand slash. First off, yeah. uh, what? Pidgeot. No, you're thinking Pidgeotto. Pidgeot was the highest, wasn't it? Oh, Pidgeot, Pidgey yes. Pidgey was a little shit. Pidgey was yeah. a little shitty one, then it was Pidgeotto, then it was Pidgeot. Yeah, you're right. Pidgeot I always was, kept them by Pidgeotto, the Pidgeotto, by the way. Pidgeot yeah. you, was dope because Fly was both useful on the map and in a battle. No, because they can't hit you when you're f- up in the fly air. Fly and Dig. F- fly and Dig, yeah. Fly and Dig were the two best. I'm actually, I'm playing through Silver right now. Yeah, so. I mean, for both Pokemon and people, you should never let anyone evolve. So, <laughs> I never did. I agree. Yeah. No, I don't want you to grow. I mean, Ash prevented Pikachu from becoming Raichu. Actually, so. Pikachu preferred not to be. Pikachu didn't want to grow. He didn't want to grow. Pikachu's kind of a bitch. Uh, so, he's like millennials right now, not wanting to get a job. Yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, the I just want to be cute. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> so, the large bird, they would say that the large bird made its nest from delicate cinnamon sticks from where they didn't know where it came from. One, the only way they could get the cinnamon was to bait the cinnamologus with large chunks of meat. The birds would fly down from their nests, snatch up the meat, and then fly back. The precarious cinnamon nests would then collapse when the bird returned with the weighted catch. Then the very smart and cunning traders would go and collect the cinnamon very quickly. And it was a very laborious process. You just couldn't understand how hard it was to collect all the cinnamon. It doesn't sound hard. I do like your campfire voice that you got going on right now. Gather round, children. <laughs> I, I story don't. Story of the Cinemalogus. <laughs> so obviously, this bird never fucking existed. Yeah. And it was all made up. It was a story to protect their family or countrymen's spice what? farms. Cinemalogus, fly! <laughs> I choose you. I would rather believe in Cinemalogus than Bigfoot. I agree. Yeah, Bigfoot doesn't make spices. Yeah, like, spice what, what does Bigfoot like bring to the table for global trade? Oh, uh, Cinnamon is. I also am a prescriber of the theory that Bigfoot is actually just blurry. Naturally. Yeah, a lot of people are. Cinnamon, though, is like added, I would say, at least 1% to my life in some capacity. Right? Oh, dude, yeah. Cinnamon's, cinnamon's in a lot like more than 1% you. 1% happiness? Uh, 
maybe point one, but childhood cinnamon pop tarts. Cinnamon pop tarts are top tier mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. I'd say cinnamon pop tarts, and then um, any strawberry, blueberry, or cherry. What? Yeah, keep you those cinnamon buns. That's you, the only thing you can thing. keep those. Uh, yeah, any yeah, yeah, cinnamon buns are the only cinnamon thing I really pretzels, about. cinnamon pretzels. Eh. Okay. Anyway, um, you ever finished an entire cinnabon? No. No. It's impossible. That is a nightmare. No one's done. It. It's like Honestly, 5, imagine starting your day diabetes. with a I, cinnabon. I don't. I like. I don't understand how it people get on a plane <laughs> after eating one. Like I'm just like I'm well, fucking flying. No, so. actually, that makes sense. If you don't want to take like a Xanax, Xanax yeah, you just eat a just Cinnabon. Need a Cinnabon. Yeah. Just like, go into a slight diabetic coma. You literally, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Twenty five hundred years ago is still a little uh, too later on in history that I want to talk about. I want to go a little earlier. So to begin with the history of spice, man, we have to go back further. The earliest written records of spices actually come from the ancient. Egyptian, Chinese, and Indian cultures. The earliest, however, that we have written down and recorded, I'm going to start with written history because there's myths that go back way further, um, is the Ebers Papyrus, which came from early Egypt dating between 1500 and 1600 BC. That's... it's not, not that, that late. not that early. It's only a couple thousand years or more. Not that early, yeah. Yeah, 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 I know. I, yeah. When you cross the zero line, it gets a little right. tricky to remember yeah, what minus qualifiers. Fifteen hundred is fifteen hundred BC. Is it's it's the thing that they can confirm the That's most. That's fifteen hundred years, like after the pyramid or something, isn't it? Um. Yeah, but I mean, like we're talking about like detailed like use of spice. Yeah, but I mean the pyramids. I think were like three thousand BC. I'll look that up real quick. Yeah, sure. That's fine. But we're going to start with the Ebers Papyrus a little bit. Um, it describes, and so you're right, but like we're talking about like very well documented use of spice and culture. Like obviously there's like, they used yeah, that's the, a thousand years after the pyramids were built. Yeah, and they found this. <laughs> like yeah. it's not like they had it just chilling. Like, correct, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. some context. At but but like and so to provide some context in how long they were using spices. So what I'm getting to here is that. In the Ebers Papyrus, it describes 800 different medicinal recipes, or not, sorry, 800 different medicinal and uh, culinary recipes, as well as numeral medicinal procedures that spices are incorporated with, such as like mummification, burial rite, things like that. You need a good spicy mummy. Yeah. It's actually pretty interesting, though. Um, So spices actually thrive in places that are insanely hot and humid. Like, that's why you see, like, India, Nepal, like, fucking, um, yeah. Because I mean... Nobody's you, going to Canada for their peppers. But do you know why they thrive there? Because they're spicy, and the lands are spicy. Actually, it's because they are because they are spicy is why they thrive there. Because yeah. those places are extremely um, typical for fungal and bacteria growth yeah. as well. So, uh, spice plants like whether it's pepper or spicy pepper, or like cumin, anything like that, whatever. Um, not cumin. Cumin's part of parsley, but we'll get to that. They actually create their own antibiotics because traditionally those hot and humid places create that fungi and it typically kills all the shit that's alive. Yeah. So those plants there have to like literally make their own antibiotics. See, I've and been lied to all these years. Uh, how, how, how have you been lied to? Uh, as a child, I was taught Candyland was a cold place. Dan, go on. I mean, yeah, gumdrop forest. Does that sound cold to you? Yeah, sounds Dude, temperate. Our, I mean, every every time I I look at Candyland, there's snow around, on the snow capped mountains. Uh, yeah, the forest just sounds like a temperate, normal climate. Damn, don't know where you're cold from. Every, every time I played the game, there was snow. You were going like A to Z. Th- you were going like Philly A to Z thinking on me. I cannot track where it went. You gotta track the ball. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay, you think it's out of the stadium? No, I squeaked I know it through the, the, the fucking the spice hole. spice also prevented animals from eating it. It did. It was a protectorant. So uh, the only animals in the entire fucking world that like spicy food. Yeah, that's true. So they adapted in these places where they were spicier uh, because they could ward off the bacteria that was growing there. But it's really hard for plants to actually uh, do that. That's why spice plants grow smaller. Typically, there's yeah. typically a smaller plant because they have More to generate. Yeah, the, to generate the antibiotics to protect themselves, yeah. it's not like they can just grow freely. Because, like, if there oh, were no pumpkin sized jalapenos, yeah, exactly. Like, if there was no bacteria or fungi in this wet and humid places, they'd grow humongously because, yeah. like, otherwise, that's perfect for anything else to grow, too. Right. Um, but it's actually interesting that smaller thing, that point, because the more antibiotics a plant produces, the smaller they are, and the smaller they are typically correlates with the hotter they are. Mm-hmm. So the hotter a pepper is, usually it's very small. A habanero is smaller than a jalapeno. I think Carolina Reapers are pretty small. Yeah, they're super tiny. So yeah. we actually figured out both. I like that, like, was it, what was trying to, 
how many things are trying to eat a Carolina Reaper? What about a ghost? Pepper? Well, a Carolina Reaper, I think, is like a, a GMO, isn't it? Like that's a spe- that's a specialty bread thing, yeah, but like a habanero, for yeah. instance, or a, a cayenne pepper. Yeah, right. Like ghost those are pepper. Ghost. Uh, it's invisible. That's why it's called a ghost. <laughs> well, it's dead. Yeah, yeah. It's dead. It's ghost. Uh, so we actually figured out kind of at the same time that like the small little peppers are both good for spiciness and uh, antibiotic properties, mm-hmm. like in medicinal properties. Because never my butthole's never been affected. That's affected. bad for your butt, uh, your gut biome, and your butt. It's not actually bad necessarily for your gut the biome. Pro- probiotics, not the antibiotics. Well, it's it your butt. it's it's not the best for your gut biome in super high doses, but like you can use it medicinally for it increases thermogenesis, which is fat burning. Um, it's good for, uh, keeping bacteria away. That's why, like, they think what happened was, like, they started sp- flavoring foods, and, like, the spicier it was, the longer it wouldn't get rot. Listen, yeah. Dr. Rhonda yeah. Patrick taught me antibiotics reset your gut for years. Yes. I agree with that. So... And only, only what? Hitlers want you to take antibiotics. Yep. Horseshoe theory. <laughs> Hitler... It's, I'm all, not it's all come full horseshoe on no, this podcast. I'm not anti-biotic. I'm probiotic. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Are you pro-probiotic or pro-antibiotic? I'm just probiotic. Yeah, he's pro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, just whatever's alive, he'll put in his stomach. So anyway. The second brain. <laughs> your gut. It's true. It's true. Honestly, I've heard this story about like how they think we might have been two separate animals at one point. Like the gut. And your head. And your head were two things that just, like, you, we're like symbiotically. We're all horsemen. Yes. Yeah. Symbiotically latched together. I mean, I know that goes against you thinking God made us all, but, like. In his image, yes. Yeah. He made at least most of the people His image might change. Image. You don't know that. Yeah. yeah. God changes his style up, man. He's, like, yeah. fucking. He modernizes. Madonna. Yeah. yeah. He does what he wants. One name. Sometimes he gets bored. Maybe One at name. At one point, he was that thing from the original Total Recall. <laughs> 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 Nothing. Yeah. He just tries things out. Elephant man. Bang. But anyway. Bearded we, lady. Bang. I hope God's a bearded woman. <laughs> like a Barnum. circus freak. He's bearded, so. Yeah, God, any, anybody that essentially P.T. Barnum discovered, you can thank God. That's right. Just being bored. Well, God made them. Yeah. yeah. In, in his own special weird way. God's a freak. Yeah. God's a fucking freak, bro. But anyway, we don't see spice even show up in Europe until the Romans start talking about cloves. And that's, I'm talking about written history again. We don't see. The Roman Empire wasn't, uh, writing was well, Rome didn't, writing existed long before Rome did. I know, but I'm talking about when it, you start seeing it show up in Europe. that's not true, Rob. Nobody could write before 1920. Anyway. Uh, Yeah. Uh, First century AD is when we start really seeing spice talk pick up in Roman writing. Um, So. I honestly, I was thinking about this too. Like you think about that shit, like probably about 2000 years ago, like all these, I'm sorry. Think about that. Probably about 2000 years of integrating spice into foods and the Romans get Egyptian food after just using salt and herbs for a while. Yeah. Can you imagine what that's like? Like you sh- show up to a culture that's been using spice you for, know, I mean, honestly, fuck even look, d- d- strip away the ancient stuff for a minute. Think about the prevalence of, Tex-Mex now versus 40 years ago. Oh my God. Yeah. You had to only basically come like to like Mexican food in general. There might've been like one or like I grew up in the Midwest. There was like maybe a couple, like one or two Mexican places. Yeah. You know what I mean? In the whole fucking, in a major city in the United States. Now there's a million, but like really like you could only get certain types of foods in certain regions. Think about when like a small town person goes to a big city and gets like good food for the first time yeah. how like what like yeah. this is what food can be Even now. think about romans coming down to egypt to trade and being like yeah. what the fuck is egyptian food like yeah. th- this isn't even the same well, thing I, we put I in our mouth that question to this day i have no idea what egyptian food is right it's just mega spicy like i don't know what it is but it's all the spices is there a good egyptian place in austin probably not God, there's there's well, good imagine. there's good God, ethiopian one. there's good uh which is, indian which ethiopian the one in south congress that i used to live above Taste of Ethiopia. Two. Oh, Taste of Ethiopia one, I think, is on. I lived above Taste of Ethiopia two. The one on really the one good. north of Ben White. No, two. I, yeah. The yeah. number two or I forgot T-O-O. you lived there. Yeah. Two T W O. And actually, I was really pissed because my wife didn't like it, 
because she doesn't like spicy food, but like the beer was good, and I loved their weird sponge tortilla situation. Oh, dude, yeah. I mean, Ethiopian food too. You it eat with great. your. I you eat with, down there and just fucking eating forever. It, you eat it with your hands or those sponges, right? Pretty yeah. much the entire. There's no like utensils in Ethiopian food. It's essentially just like a fajitas, but they give you a one big one. And you kind of pull it apart, though. Yeah. Yeah. You make your own. You pull the sponge bread apart and make your own little tortilla out of it, which can be kind of a bitch, but. Yeah, give you a little circle thing. I, I do. Circle cut. I've actually never been there. I've been meaning to try it, so it's it's, good, it's, it's worth a look. I got I, I actually <laughs> like African beer a lot. Although I think a lot of it, uh, really, it's essentially just like Africans making a version of European beer. Well, yeah, it's like I mean, like I like Kalik, which is Bahamian beer, but I like Japanese beer, but rice like beer, that's like Singtao or whatever the fuck. Uh, I remember being Chinese. Sapporo. Sapporo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kirin. Um, yeah. Anyway, though, like once the uh, the Romans get a hold of this like spicy food from down under. Which is Africa to them, not yeah, Australia. It is down under them. Yeah, down under. Uh, after that, uh, you start to see like the dis- distribution of different spices throughout pretty much cold ass, damp ass Europe, where they're like rosemary and salt. This is what we season stuff with. Yeah. yeah, like you see it fucking explode. It starts just taking off, and at a certain point, about hundred or so years later, gold and spice were worth the same in weight. Uh, but except in- spice was useful. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Spice wasn't just shiny and hard to dig up. Right. It was like gold you could make. And a lot of people think that, like, you know, obviously agriculture is, like, a big turning point in human development. But they think as much as, like, wheat or corn or whatever, like, you know, carbs mm-hmm. that were grown, they think spices were also kind of something yeah. that lent to. It's actually why I don't buy gold. I stock up on spices. Smart. I'm really hoping it pays off someday. Um, Long-term investment. I mean, if society collapses you never know i mean we have a seed bank but i'm just trying to become the season bank <laughs> the season bank. <laughs> i'm the flavor bank baby <laughs> what's up where's the joke Jake? oh you're serious yeah. god damn it this when is a damn thing collapses. No, he, what he owns he owns one and a half ethereum coins I and a three. closet full of dried jalapenos i have 3.2 ethereum Ooh. Put some respect on my name. Daddy on Warbucks over here. A lot of just freeze-dried jalapenos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but you know what's interesting is like another thing, another reason why spice, like obviously it has a function of flavoring, but the reason why it was a good currency is because it, it was a good store of currency as well. Um, what does that mean? So uh, just like salt, think about it. Like it lasts a fucking long time if you know how to store it right. Oh. Like spices, so interestingly enough, I was actually catching Ross on the way out when I was walking in. Mm-hmm. He was talking about a sponsor they had for a little bit, like a while back. It was this really good spice company, but like they made the spice condiments in like bottles the size of my arm. Right, which no one was. And well, not that. It's not economical for your business to make. Why do you think spices come in little fucking things? Yeah, you don't resell. Yeah, yeah the like, shelf life is going to exist for 10 years i'm right. pretty sure the expiration date is a formality yeah, we on have most stuff literally right there it's on the it's on the fridge i know who it is uh no free ads though yeah no free ads but like think, fuck you lorries so outside of like metal and salt spice was the next best like long-term storage solution for yeah. currency as well and it had a function well, i mean we're we talking things spice other than like literally oh you said other than salt right yeah, yeah other yeah, than right. salt salt is a rock yes no <laughs> salt was also a currency too yeah so like really? it was so Gandhi was just throwing away hard-earned money? That's so much later. He had 12-year-olds <laughs> to sleep with. <laughs> hey, he man. didn't have time for your money. T-H-Y-M-E. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, he, he's too busy trying to own 12-year-olds. So just to kind of put into perspective of how. racist dick. <laughs> yes. Didn't like blacks either. <laughs> we never talked about that part of Gandhi, really. Uh, we try to overlook it. Yeah. You know, Peace. Or like, sep- honestly, it's just an independence warrior. I mean, look, he's still he's he still died in the black, right? Yeah, have you guys done like that yet, Coop? Uh, on Iconoblast, have you guys talked about how p- much of a piece of shit Gandhi was? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Is it coming? Yeah, it's, it's coming. It's coming. Coop says it's coming. All right. Yeah. I, mean, I, I will. I will dive deep with still, you on that one. He still died in the po- in the bonus. Like he was still in the positive, but yeah, getting shot in the streets definitely. But look, a- let's let's yeah, you got to be honest about the guy. Yeah, for sure. No, I mean. You can't judge someone's hits without their fucking misses. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's... it's you can't talk about... Some big misses. You can't <laughs> yeah, talk they're about... They're fucking hard, dude. You it's can't not talk good. talk about Eleanor Rigby without Octopus's Garden. What? Coop got it. 
Beatles. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I thought, yeah, never mind. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Anyway, uh, so just to give an example of how like prevalent spice was as a currency, uh, in 408, when barbarian Visigoths attacked the city of Rome, they were induced. The Romans were induced to leave only on the payment of, a, or they were induced to leave only on the payment of a huge ransom that included some gold, silver, or large quantities of silk. But they had one thing in particular that was high up on the Visigoth list. Brown like, mustard. Like it was high up. Basically, this was like the number one thing on the Visigoth city sacking tour rider. It was a literal ton of dried pepper. Yeah, so at the time, there's two reasons the any barbarian was sacking Rome at that time. It's because they had uh, the Visigoths and, and everybody else had gotten a lot of the Vandals, all this stuff. They gotten a lot of power, but it was still like... <sighs> They, they were like... What do barbarians do with a fucking they city? They were like new money that wanted to join the country club. Yeah. Right? Like, they they were like new money, but they wanted to put on the polos. Right? And Rome was the Rome was the Ralph Lauren polo situation. Like, yeah. you had to still act... You had to dress Roman, act Roman, be Roman to prove that you were powerful. But Even if Ralph- Rome had lost all its luster, that was still... The, the way they were... And the East Roman Empire had not lost any luster. That was still the preeminent world power, even though... Barbarians were doing a number so they of didn't have too. the tiny horse; they had the giant. Yes. They, they were doing, yeah, they were yeah. doing the like when the kids mall when, horse. Ki- when yeah. kids start like yeah. trying to dress fratty when they join a frat and they go they get the wrong polo. <laughs> they get the big horse and everyone's like, "You look polo. like a fucking European trash head." Everyone like, knows. Everyone knows it's a cheap polo. Yeah. So essentially, the barbarians wanted spice and all this because like only poor people eat plain meat. Oh, you just put salt on your food, right? We you put pepper eat like the Romans. So yeah. Even though even though Western Rome had completely lost its actual actionable power culturally, and oh. this is actually kind of like a terrifying thing for America, as it's like you'll be like, oh well, no, America's still like the number one cultural power. It's not not now, but at some point, I imagine if America f- be like has a downfall, what will happen is is we will still be the preeminent cultural. People will want to act Western and, and American. How we just won't be the power anymore. The same way barbarians wanted to act Roman, even though the Romans couldn't project any fucking power at all. It would be like if the Pac-12 just became the preeminent football conference, and they just started yelling Pac-12, Pac-12, Pac-12 at yeah. fucking like yeah. things. They would no, just act. They they cheer Alliance. Oh my God! That's are they going to start cheering that? You think they did when UCLA beat uh, that's LSU? Oh, that's. That's like so lame and so funny at the same time. Alliance, alliance, <laughs> alliance. No, that's that's fantastic. They yeah. should absolutely do that. But that's why they wanted the spice. Yeah, because they wanted to feel Roman, be Roman. Well, that and they wanted their food to taste different. I'm sure you get sick of it after a while Man, because variety been. is the spice of life. Good. The spice oh, of life. Definitely. Yeah, but also that would have been a great Roman ad. <laughs> get what? at us. Transition. Oh uh, yeah, for an actual Roman. Actually, uh, but mo- yeah, no free ads. <laughs> My wife has this joke. I, I don't know if she will want me to tell this, but like... Is it, your penis won't get hard. Buy Roman. <laughs> no, it's not that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Is that one Courtney tells you? Actually, you have receipts. I can't... Yeah. yeah. My penis got hard at well, least once. Uh, it's like... Are we sure? <laughs> hello, like half hard, and then I put it in my hand and, and slapped it. We were, yeah, we were, are we sure she didn't just sit on the toilet seat? I'm positive. Okay. I'm, I don't have enough power to get it from my penis to the toilet seat. There's not enough juice. Even, even even Earth's gravity won't do it. It just floats there. Yeah. <laughs> just slowly wafts down like a leaf falling from a yeah, tree. Like a, <laughs> like a snowflake. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, oh, there it goes. Not great. <laughs> no, but we were watching this show where it's like. He's not my child. <laughs> He's not my child. We were watching this show where this guy, someone was asking this guy why he left his wife. And he was like, well, you know, variety is the spice of life. And he was like, what a variety? It was just like a stripper's name. Yeah. That would be that would be an amazing stripper name, Variety. It would be. That's yeah. I'm surprised I've never heard that on a stage it, before. It, honestly, it sounds like Variety, Spice, and Life are all stripper names. <laughs> and Life? He, yeah, and he's just fucking the three of them. <laughs> well, you know, Variety is the spice. I don't even know how that works, but yeah. it's just Variety, Spice, and Life. Yeah. And he's living with three strippers. <laughs> it's like a force, a yeah. crowd And Life situation. is a, definitely a stripper name. It's a great cereal. L Y. Cinnamon Life. That was a big part of my childhood. Oh, Cinnamon. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. Yeah. Anyway. Um, you don't tell me there wouldn't be a stripper named L-Y-F-E. Oh, that's for Ladies sure. Ladies and then. gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Life. 
Variety. Yes. Variety's good. Like Variety Variety's is top good tier one. stripper name. Um, so we don't actually like most of the. You don't see, start seeing like other more interesting spices until about the 500 show up into Europe. Nutmeg well, didn't. White people don't. In Europe. Yeah. Like white people in Europe. Yeah. Like I said, nutmeg didn't even show up to our white asses until like the 500s. Man, that's the whitest spice. Right? Yeah. We're actually going to dive deep on. We might on. have slaughtered whoever originally had that just to take it. Like there, just we have can't, our own. Oh, yeah. Rob, you're such well, a. I, mean, I, yeah. don't mean just, I don't mean, obviously, we slaughtered <laughs> to take it for ourselves, but I mean, we erased all even record of them to be like nutmegs white it's in our eggnog <laughs> nutmeg so the white people spice we're gonna actually it's grown in germany <laughs> yeah it, it so uh, it actually started uh in banda which is a region in india it's like islands inland it's mm -hmm. like inland islands in india that we're really good I at producing is the only thing that grows in europe moss and pine trees you get rosemary and like parsley all right and and parsley does make cumin the seeds do but they probably couldn't figure that out no. They're like, I guess throwing? we make more bitter herb with these seeds. Yeah, what are you throwing? Porridge. You just eat, you just kill a bear. S salt. <laughs> or an elk. You dip it in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, or you pickle a herring. Yeah. Right, you oh, bury it like, underground, yeah, like, like near the here. ocean. Yeah. So, no uh, wonder we conquered the world. We were furious. No, it's like, terrible. think about it. Like, the really, like, a lot of the first conquests, other than, like, obviously territory Everyone and hunting ground. Well except for us. Except for to. hunting grounds, I it know, was for better tasting food. No yeah. colonialism gets a bad rap, but imagine if we didn't. I'm, that's what my point was at the very beginning. It's like, if you eat spices outside of these, like, 10 countries, you're kind of part of the problem. Look, I'm not saying... I'm fine with being a part of that problem. I'm not saying... It, whatever happened, happened. It was right. <laughs> but I am saying it was tasty. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah. yeah. Anyway... What uh, would you do for a full spice cabinet? <laughs> genocide. Yeah. <laughs> genocide is the answer to that yes. question. So anyway, uh, Banda was actually renamed the Nutmeg Islands because that's where nutmeg came from. Okay. Um, but... I want to dive into nutmeg for a minute, and this is just for me. This one's for me, guys. So, I love eggnog, and you got to top that shit off. Fun fact about nutmeg. It makes you trip balls. Do you guys know this? No. Oh. Yeah, do I start snorting nutmeg? I assumed that was the spiced rum. Uh, no. I'm going to die. I'm going to go deep on this for a minute. I do not recommend doing this, as we as a podcast absolutely do not condone the abuse of household spices. And I do not want to be liable for any of you idiots trying to do this. So no, I'm not going to say. No, do it. It really depends on your tolerance to it. And it's completely dependent on a lot well, of other as things. Everyone knows don't take Dan's advice. He is a homeless man with a job. So. Okay. Start with a whole seed and see how you feel. You have to eat a whole pot of this shit. Right. Like, how but. It's a seed. I've only seen ground nutmeg. Typically, you don't see it in whole. Hmm. And there's. Did you do a seed's worth of ground? Yeah, no, it's the it's the volume. Okay. Actually, a seed's volume. worth of ground might act, or grounds what you just Can said. You inject it in yourself. You just heat it up on a spoon. You eat it. You do not want to do that. Okay. That would don't kill you. The do not free base the nutmeg. Don't smoke it. It's going to be a bad time. Uh, but uh, yeah, nutmeg is a very potent hallucinogen in the right amount. We'll just for funsy, tonight. just for funsy, it's going to last a long fucking time, Dan. I got a long fucking drive tomorrow. You're not going to want to take any other substances if you take nutmeg tonight. Okay. Astro Lopez's throat in your teeth. <laughs> anyway, just for funsies, here's a little... Do you what? guys know what Arrowhead is, by the way? What? Arrowhead? Are you familiar with the website Arrowhead? No. Uh, you guys didn't do cool drugs in college. Yeah, not, definitely not nutmeg. I didn't do nutmeg either because... Uh, anyway. This is a trip report courtesy of Arrowhead, which is a trip reporting site where you can yeah. like log your doses. It's like people that are like, I'm willing to do this drug, report what I find. Mm -hmm. Um I'm not going to say the dose because this guy did a lot over, but now that we've decided we're going to say it, he did about 15 grams. I think, no, I'm sorry. He did nine pods. He did nine pods of nutmeg over the course of about 15 hours. I don't know what that means. That's what I'm saying. There's no real way to right. dose it. Like, uh, so this was after a heavy dose. This is his report from nine hours into a trip. 
The waves of euphoria are settling into a constant feeling, a low-grade euphoria which translates into a feeling of interconnectedness with everything. Enhanced appreciation for everything around me and a general feeling that could be described as the complete absence of anxiety. I feel no pressure, no sadness, no anxiety. I feel like I'm just in the groove of life. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I also keep apologizing to my friend, who's very mad at me, I think, but I can't be sure. Also, everything's moving weird. Are like, you just always on that, Meg? Me? Yeah, you always apologize to us. That's anxiety. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but he's he's he definitely doesn't have the absence of anxiety. So no. I can't imagine that. No, gonna, he thinks he's not gonna the, 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 the thing that he's writing is that he like thinks he doesn't have anxiety, but he's going through full blown trip anxiety while also feeling you this is basically right. what uh high mushroom dose feels like. Okay. Uh the reason I said the disclaimer, though, wasn't about the tripping part. It's actually about this part that he wrote, which I thought was fucking hilarious. One thing I've noted, and forgive me if you feel like this is too much information, I set out to write a complete trip report, and because I was on nutmeg, I have to report this. My penis and testicles are noticeably enlarged. I don't mean, like, swollen or anything like that. They're just, like, 50% bigger than they normally are for whatever reason. I thought it was just my imagination, but my girlfriend commented on it before I ever said anything, so it seems to be a real, real effect of nutmeg. It happens every time I use it. Um, much nutmeg they put in that COVID vaccine? <laughs> Fuck. I don't know. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, I forgot about that. Chick married to the rapist yeah. said that. Uh, yeah. Either Nicki that's Minaj? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she's married to him, right? Is no, it's his cousin or No, she's married to a rapist. I don't think she's married though. I think it's just her boyfriend. I think she's married to him. Anyway, um I didn't want to say the dosage because I knew like anyone listening to the show would not give a shit about the tripping part and would much more be interested in the giant penis part. I, I wouldn't mind going on a trip and seeing my dick giant. But what what causes that? I think that this is either it either has to do with like vascularity and like opening yeah. well, opening you do blood vessels. Get inflamed if you eat too much spicy food, right? Like you yeah, but I, I think especially with uh, some hallucinogens, it creates vasodilation, which also opens up the veins Both. in your penis and balls. But I also think this might be the weirdest like flex ever. Like or some guy just guy? yeah, just trying to be like, also my dick's real big. My, dick got huge. my, my girlfriend, my girlfriend, that. my girlfriend thinks I'm cool and has a big old dick. What if you just put too much nutmeg in your eggnog at Christmas and you just like start hogging out in front of your family? Under the mistletoe? Yeah. 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 So uh, when I read that, I actually had to dig deeper on like, is this guy full of shit? Yeah. Like, what's the deal? So apparently one of the best known mood enhancers for women and Meg is nutmeg through antiquity. Also known as Jaipal or woman's Viagra, this spice has been used for centuries for its medicinal purposes, both in... Ayurveda and by the Greeks. In Ayurveda, nutmeg is used in medicines to increase body heat and sweat, sweeten breath. Most what's, what's the line between date rape and just like dropping a like giving a like I'm, let's get oysters? I, or, yeah, know, I'm, like, I'm, no, I dude, I'm say. about to get to this. Oh, like, okay. yeah, like no, because like there's a difference between an aphrodisiac, obviously, and a roofie, of course, right? But like, what's there's like I don't I know this is like an uncomfortable thing to say, but like. There is, you do approach where it gets to one or the other, right? Like if you give someone too much of an aphrodisiac, they're no longer in control of themselves. Well, right? I, I think so, you're, you're talking about like aphrodi something that enhances mood versus something yeah, that, that de 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 deliriate. De de what's right, the right, point right. where, where does an aphrodisiac cross into a delirium? Yeah, I think yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. if you take a fucking blue pill and you uh, do something you shouldn't be doing, I think you're still liable. Right. I'm not saying like, what's the difference? I mean, a roofie eating three oysters. You know what, Rob? I like, think we're all sick of you walking back your date rape apologies. Yes. Okay. Anyway. Come on, man. Just I don't joking. even want to make my child any money now. <laughs> just gonna, oh, that's no, but like really, though, there is a line. Yes. Between. No, like okay, it's twenty-two oysters. <laughs> it's, if you if you give her Can more than two dozen oysters, on top? Yeah. dude, let me if finish. Would, let okay, me finish right, this part. Okay. Most importantly, throughout antiquity, it's been used as a treatment for low libido. Nutmeg not only acts as an antidepressant, but also works as an aphrodisiac by stimulating the central nervous system and warming the pubic region. How much nutmeg? We're getting there. It imitates the effects of serotonin. It How much nutmeg to make his <laughs> wife attracted to him again? It imitates the effects of serotonin. I'm going to read through this just so we can get to it. It imitates the effects of serotonin. The spicy taste of nutmeg causes arousal, and the alluring aroma relaxes the body. A pinch of nutmeg can be included in the diet by adding it to desserts like cakes and uh drinks to give it a spicy edge but it can also be added to your coffee and milk to spice up your sex life so my dudes you need to get your girl that psl you need to get her that pumpkin spice latte 
because as much as like as little bit as half a teaspoon can fucking do it apparently and does that not make so much fucking sense why pumpkin spice lattes especially in the fall when everyone's starting to feel sad everyone likes that fucking spicy pumpkin shit would explain a lot of homecoming hookups seriously Literally, like, all you're doing is chilling. Your, like, she's feeling anxious about herself. The pumpkin spice latte yeah. is going to chill her out and horn her up at the that same time. That's weird. My ex-girlfriend just kept going back to Starbucks. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Multiple times a day. It was weird. Yeah. Also, Only in October. Yeah. She was probably just fucking a barista. Fun yeah. fact. There's. I think that's that's what I was going for. Yeah. Yeah. No, she just liked the nutmeg, Dan. It's a dirty Starbucks bathroom. Well, it's probably clean. They make a livable wage. They do. do. They? Yeah. yeah. Does that make you clean a public but they bathroom? they also leave it open to the homeless. <laughs> Not in L.A. So maybe they Not in it. fucking L.A. They don't. You need a key code to get into that bathroom in Starbucks. When? Starbucks said that they would uh, leave it open to the homeless. Is that recent? Because I was there in 2019, and they had that shit locked up. Um, I think it's around the same time. This, was also, eight, right, this is also eight blocks from Skid Row, so I do not blame them. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, but fun fact, too, even though it is an arousing spice, uh... If you forget to wrap it up, just wrap about up, just about a tablespoon of that shit uncooked can induce abortion and terminate a pregnancy. Oh, that's useful. Uh, since we're in Texas, I was gonna. Yeah, I was gonna say like I will say this on the podcast because people deserve bodily autonomy outside of the scope of government, vaccine, or abortion. I don't give a fuck. I am gonna include that dosage on there. If you need to nog your egg. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> fuck me. That's good. I'm having more fun with this than I think both of you are. <laughs> I love spices. <laughs> in the early part of the Middle Ages, uh, Asian spices in Europe were costly and mainly used by the wealthy. This is when we're getting into the Middle Ages. A pound of saffron costs the same as a horse. A pound of ginger as much as a sheep. Two pounds of mace as much as a cow. A Germanic price table of 80, 19, or 1393 lists a pound of nutmeg is worth seven fat oxen. A pound of nutmeg. Think how many bitches. Yeah. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, they don't start writing about the uh, sexual effects until about the 1500s of nutmeg. Yeah. But you know they figured that out. Yeah. Yeah. That, why do you think, think about it? Like, you yeah. just go walk up, you go into a tavern, it's full of hot wenches. You walk up to the second floor and just start throwing handfuls of nutmeg into the air. Do you know what? Uh, like me- LeBron James yeah, before like, a game. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what burst the spice bubble, though, and made it affordable for everyone? What? You idiots. The Irish? The Catholics. Oh. The Crusades, basically, it was One like... One in the yeah. same, really. Yeah. Not really. No, different. I don't even not recognize Actually, them. the Irish were Gaelic, Irish, but uh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, no, if it weren't for the Crusades, the price of spices might still be pretty high. But you high. said the, they were expensive in the 1300s. The first Crusade was in the 1100s, 200 years prior to your little Germanic table there. Uh, yeah, no, right around toward the end of the Crusades is when it starts picking uh. up, like, like 1400s. Okay. Yeah, like uh, I think I think the yeah, Crusades fits your narrative, Jake. Yeah, the uh, kind of I'm absolutely I am absolutely gonna fit my narrative for this podcast. Yeah. You better thank me for it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, it was uh, around. I think the Crusades ended what 1500. About <sighs> about. That's a tough thing to say. So like there was I think like, I don't think they ever ended. <laughs> I'm oppressed. Yes. You yeah. Uh, well, you're part of the Crusades problem. The Crusades that people think about to the Holy Land. There was like four or five of them, and they were kind of at the 1100s to maybe the 12, 1300s. I forget the ending point, but it was it was not the 1500s for sure. But crusade, like jihad, yeah, is a bit of a term. For example, the city I'm from, St. Louis, St. Louis, is there a jihad there? Became a saint because he was fighting crusades, and people are like, oh, crusades. Well, he went to the Israel. No, never. It was fighting in North Africa against and you know Muslims that had conquered North Africa. Okay. Forgive me. Like, I'm very, I'm actually not super knowledgeable about the Crusades. Shocker, I know. Um, <laughs> were they like lethal weapon movies? Yes. In That's, that, you, you need to live in that reality. They, they okay. were, they were numbered. They were numbered, yeah. Yeah. Did Which get, was the best Crusade? The four or five? Uh, the best Crusade for us? I think it was the second or third Crusade. Which one was Richard the Lionheart Coop? Was that second or third? Yeah. Third. Okay. Richard the Lionheart fought Salah Hadin to a draw. Couldn't beat him. We did take Jerusalem and shit on the first crusade, so that was a good one. But after the big, f- big get, Jerusalem. I mean, it was basically like we won the first one, and then like the rest were kind of. <laughs> Talk about the game. juice not being worth the fucking squeeze. Fun fact: I've Jerusalem. Only seen, uh, yeah. Lethal Weapon Four. <laughs> cool. I don't know. I bought that on DVD when I was like ten. 
Was that the, mo- the one? That was that, was that just like, I want to spend my money kind no. of transaction? No, I think my parents just got for it. Like, Jet Li. It was a Jet Li one. Uh, okay. Yeah, it came out like a one or two. That yeah. checks out for a 10 year old at that time. Yep. Mm, not Chris Rock. Chris Tucker. That's or no, Chris Tucker. Yeah, rush, rush Hour. Yeah. yeah. No, you're, you're the one getting the <laughs> You're black mixing up black issues. people and Asian it's people right me. now. It's I, fantastic. I right. Joe yeah. Pesci and Lethal Weapon? Yes. Okay. Anyway, yeah, you, you start to see uh, after about 1,500 spices to become more widely available and become the kind of flavor in that's accessible to everyone today. Mm-hmm. So. Did that have anything else to do with, like, better travel? Oh, travel was probably easy. I mean, you got to think travel is easier, but also, like, you have massive amounts of just Instead of like trading, it's just pillaging at that point. So like, it's not a lot of transactions. I just mean like better technology, like better ships. Yeah, I, go a I, you, you got to think. Like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a lot of things. But I'm blaming you guys for bursting the spice bubble. Well, you're wrong. No, I'm not. Our crusades are like over. Okay. But you did it. We were there. We've been. We were there for hundreds of years. Yeah, your crusades have just begun. The Jews. Mm-hmm. What crusades have we ever had? Except for like, I don't know. Um, like, I don't know. Who's currently in charge of Jerusalem? Uh, that's your crusades, white boy. <laughs> we didn't get asked to be put there. Who put us there? Who put us in Jerusalem? That was a make good. That was a make good. Yeah. A make good. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, okay, oh, you guys, someone. you need you need your own space. Not for everyone. Hey, yeah. you need your own space. We're going to drop you in the middle of everyone that hates you, which is the world. Whee! Yeah. yeah. But anyway, Where we both put you? the Jewish problem, yeah. right? Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's it for spices, though. That's what I wanted to talk about Why today. Have more in Columbus. Oh no, I mean, yeah, Col- uh, obviously Columbus. Spices, right? So I mean, it's pretty common math here. Like, the whole point of uh, global travel was to find faster ways to India. Yeah. That's why Indians are called Indians because he was trying to circum- circumvent the globe. Caribbean is the West Indies. Right. Exactly. For no reason. <laughs> no. The West Dutch West, West Indies, Indies, actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, he was trying to get a quicker route to spices so he could cut out the middleman and, you know, just like murder these people that had spice farms in yeah, India. Yeah, you want to go around Africa. Yeah, you don't have to go around the Horn. Yeah. That's a really hard trip. Yep. Did so, Columbus end up in jail? He was jailed for a little while for because he was that awful to natives. No, I think it was just like he didn't pay the king or queen that he borrowed from. No, it was part, part of it was he was torturing natives. Like, I don't think they cared. You would be surprised. Spain? <laughs> Spain cared? That's more speaks to how awful Columbus was to them. Because <laughs> Spain was the worst. Yes. Uh, can you well, imagine torturing someone so bad that Spain's like, hey. It, dep- it depends what you're talking about. So, like, you're talking about Ferdinand and Isabella. That was, like, right at the beginning of, of colonialism versus, like, 100 years later when Spain was just fully committed to being a piece of shit. True. So, you're like, you know, be like comparing, like, Joe Biden caring about, or, or even Donald Trump caring about the torture of someone versus like, or like uh, Jim Crow or like, for example, versus like literally uh, Taft or something. You know what I you mean? You know, this is all over my head. Yeah. Nobody knows anything about Taft except that he got stuck in a bathtub. That's all I know yeah. about him. That's all we know. And that's why he didn't care about Jim Crow. He had to get out of that bathtub. <laughs> he, had, he, <laughs> he had more, he had higher lips. priorities. Yeah. Stuck in a bathtub. I mean, you can't worry about everyone else when you're stuck in a bathtub. Right. It's it's true logic. It was our fault for electing a man stuck in a bathtub. It was our last, fault for not renovating the bathtub. See the last true obese president? president? Actually, Trump, I think, would have qualified. As yeah, obese. well, I don't go by that. I don't. I, I, Clinton got a lot. Yeah, of he's fat. jacked. Clinton what are you got talking a lot about? He's perfect health. Dude, uh, the Norm Macdonald roast. Yeah, Trump was just saving his battery. We know this. Yeah. yeah, there's only so much life in a man. There were really no fat presidents between Taft and. Was there a fat president before him? Glover Cleveland, was Before he fat? Taft. I mean, there were some tubby presidents for sure. Cleveland fat? Oh, Nixon wasn't I fat, would, was he? I would he? honestly wager that Trump is in the top five heaviest presidents. He's also very tall. Yeah, because once, once you can actually see somebody, you don't you don't want to vote for some slop. Yeah. I mean, that's why Kennedy won He's over Nixon. Guy, yeah, huh? he was a hottie. Anyway, for then. what'd you guys learn? Man, you really kind of stole my thunder with... Uh, Spice of life comment. But uh, no, I think uh, what I learned was... <laughs> that old adage stole your thunder? <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I think... What, well, I actually said it on the podcast, so I stole my own thunder. Um, however, I did learn that uh, although there was many terrible things that happened in humanity, uh, it was all worth it because food tastes delicious. Robert? That's a hard one to argue with. I mean, the end's kind of... <laughs> you know what I learned, really, is that when you talk about, like, uh, oh, yeah, like, 
my uh, my culture is the one that does the spicy food, right? Are you from one of these nine countries? No, nope, then you don't know. Mm, you didn't even have it. Yeah, didn't know. Yeah. Um, I think the thing I learned, though, too, that I thought was interesting is like, well, oh, God, these colonials, they fucking monopolized all this shit. What do you think the people that were growing the spice were doing by protecting their trade secrets, trying to run, run well a monopoly? Yeah. Everyone does that well shit. Yeah. Make up, Make up a you, Pokemon. <laughs> if you have something valuable... Say you steal it from a terrifying bird. <laughs> Make up an Aesop fable, yeah, essentially. And, and, <laughs> and keep the, the vultures, not to mix a metaphor here, away. Yeah, right? seriously. You're stealing it from a horrifying... Giant bird. Pokemon bird, yeah. <laughs> the Cinemalagus. And, 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 and anyone that's buying it from you, they don't even want a piece of that. No. Trust me, buddy, I'm barely able to get it from we, That is true. We it, throw our children at this thing. Of all the legendary birds, I feel like the, the cinnamon bird in the Pokemon universe... Probably the least intimidated. That would be Ho-Oh, I believe. Would be probably the closest to a cinnamon we bird. We got We got Akuna. Actually, Moltres might be a cinnamon Moltres. bird. Well, he's a fiery guy. Anything yeah. that does fly. Spicy. Anything that does fly is goddamn near invincible. Dude, that Kazakh eagle. That thing. The Kazakh The one that kills deer. <laughs> the one. The Kazakhs, like, teach to hunt deer. They falcon. With, they, they have falconers. They falconer, yeah. yeah, for for the bird. You it's could kill their bananas. toddlers. Like... There are, there are Kazakhs. We're in bird talk now. There are Kazakhs who, you remember that scene from Game of Thrones where the like goat herder brings his burnt child to Daenerys and he's like, <laughs> you're dragons. No, that bird does that shit. Yeah, that bird could do that to an actual child. That bird Not could, the burning part, but just murdering. That bird could do that to a small human, just like a short guy. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, like Jose Altuve would get murdered Done. by one of those birds. Done, dude. I mean, you can give him a bat, he'd still die. William Walker would be toast from a Kazakh eagle. I think he'd survive. He would probably train it to murder people in South vampire, America. So. Yeah, yeah, you can't eat. Or Central America. Dead. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, for Rob Fox and Dan Rochester, I'm Jake Goldman, and you just got soft served.